the question was, you told us now about these, these arrests for attempted murder. Um, you became in the top six most dangerous prisoners in the UK. How did that come about then? Because um, I refused to listen to the system. I hated the system. I just hated authority, really. But what I didn't like is, look, if you're a prison officer and you're sound, you're sound, you're doing your job, good. But you get them ones who put a white shirt on and they've got power behind them because they've got 20 million prison officers behind them. And they just become dogs, really. And there was this one, I loved my gym at the time. And in home, I was prison at the time where I was. You had to press the buzzer. You sell a buzzer. Where they'd come to the end of the wing and shout, Jim. Jim, yeah. And you'd press your buzzer and they'd come and open the door of everyone who pressed the buzzer. Same with church, wasn't it? Yeah, they weren't doing that for me. So they weren't opening my door. Bastards. So I pressed the buzzer the first time. He says, oh, how come you're not opening my door? He went, oh, I'll make sure I'll do it next time. So the next time comes, press my buzzer. doesn't even come on my landing. But I'm not, they're not doing this to me. What's the reason they were messing with you like that? Probably just because I was running around the jail, like causing havoc and getting involved. In... They don't like you getting big either. Yeah, well, I was. I did get involved. I was getting, like, I don't want to make it sound like I was a fit, like, doing out, but I was, like, m muscling in on people as well, like, bullying people and saying, hey, give me some drugs. Hey, I want this. Because uh, yeah, um, we'll do it fucking 19 stone, yeah, fucking rip. You know what I mean? Just a nutcase. Fuck it. <laughs> And uh, basically, they just didn't like me, and and I, they didn't like the fact that I wouldn't listen to them, and I was always running my mouth. And and anyway, they weren't letting me out. So what I did, I press. I waited till I saw the officer who I wanted on the wing, and I pressed my buzzer, and he come. I said, and he start. I says, "What about the gym?" I said, "You said you'd let me out." He went, "Oh, what a pity." I said, "See you." I said, "You're dead." I said, "I want to get you." He went, "Oh, whatever. I've heard it all before." I says, "We'll see." Okay then. So instantly set up a start setting up a plan, and I went out on a like association and associations when all the inmates go out and play pool, get a shower, uh, you know, do whatever they do, and they mingle on the wing. Yeah, and and that's what association is. And uh, watch I watch your bit of TV till the fight goes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not yeah, and then use the TV. Yeah. Right now, <laughs> and then they had these big, massive coffee jars, like glass coffee jars, and it, it was the only thing I had at hand. No, dead quick to think about. As soon as the door opened on association, I got that, wrapped it in a towel, and had it as if I was going into the showers. Walked on the bottom landing where all the playing pool. And I went up to two lads and I said, look, you know if you kick off, anything kicks off, them officers, because they always stand near the gates to get on and off the wing if anything happens. I said, you know they're going to get off the wing. Shit sounds like, like yeah. they stand right near the gates as well, or yeah. on either side. <laughs> so I said to them, I said, uh, go to them and just talk to the officers. So when it kicks off, just stand in front of the gate so they can't get off the wing. So that's what he did. Uh, they went over, they're chatting away at the officer, he thinks they're having a normal chat. And then I went up to another lad from Pete Lee and I said, right, start chucking pool balls at the officer, or screws we'd call them. And he went, oh, like, he was like, ah, oh, I don't know, man. I says, listen, mate, I said, do you want respect or not? And I knew one from on the out. And he was like, ah, oh, I don't know. I says, look, just do it, man. And he did. He said, okay, then. So I stepped back, I said, I'll deal with everything else. I said, you chuck the pool balls once it kicks off, I'll deal with the rest. Uh, he did, started chucking the pool balls at the officer. Officers jumped up, went to get off the wing. The lads have jumped in the front of him, stopped him getting off. He's pulled his bat on and ran towards the inmate who was uh, fingering the pool balls. At this point, I pulled out the coffee jar, smashed the bottom off, and I ran up to him and I just started stabbing him. Uh, he was putting his hands up, so I was, catch I was going for his face and his neck. But he put his hands up, and so I'm catching his hands because he's blocking. Yeah. And then he, I'm trying to get him in his stomach, and then he's putting his legs up, and I've trapped him into the corner, and I just started just going wild and trying to stab him wherever I could stab him. And I was cutting my own hands as well, you know, like bit, little cuts, though, where I've had hold of it, and that, it's all the glass is smashing. And then another officer come. They say I stabbed them, but at this point, you're in like a frenzy, aren't you? You don't know yeah. what's going on. So I, I don't know. Uh, he, he says I did uh, they got me on the floor uh, and actually they didn't get me on the floor I literally I went down so I've done what I needed to do and then I've just put the stuff down I've just laid down put my hands up they've come grabbed all my arms got my head did all that rubbish to do and then one of the officers picked my arm up put it on the glass because it was the bottom of the glass it was still stuck up and it was like one bit sticking up on that round circle at the bottom and he's got my arm there, and that was like bone, do you know what I mean? 
He put it on and he went, you, boom, and just with his knees, just bounced on my hand. Dirty didn't bastard. make a noise. Didn't even feel it to be truthful. And that was because I was my adrenaline was gone. Yeah. And I would I was so full of pride at the time. I don't want them to hear a noise come out of me. And I just basically looked up with them. And it must have scared them this. Because I looked up with them, didn't make a noise, and I just went, see you. I said, when I get you for this, you're going to die. I'm going to kill you. I'm coming after your family. And that's what I said to them. And then anyway, I go to the hospital. I get shipped to Durham Prison. Went to Durham Prison. Um, they started messing about with me. See, once you do a prison officer, that's it. You're a different ball game. Different ball game to the officers. It's like everywhere you go, it's like you want to mess with one of us. Let's go. We're going to mess with Durham's you. Durham's old school as well, yeah. isn't it? Couldn't break me, though. They couldn't break me. No. What did they do to you there then? <laughs> in that jail I went to, then went to a top security prison. So I, I got chucked out of there quick. Cartier van. I wasn't Cartier, but they took me on a Cartier van and they took me to Franklin. Uh, top security prison, Franklin. Went to Franklin, they took me straight to the segregation unit. Did the Midnight Express, like just a bit of the night? Come yeah, just Cartier van. No, straight away. No, there was an incident where um, I got a weapon and threatened, like jumped out. And I, I jumped out the cell with a weapon. And I went, boo! And all the officers all just jumped back <laughs> and they were all like stood there. I went, here. And they went, because they were winding me up and they put me on basic and took all my stuff off us so they thought yeah. I couldn't get weapons. So I made a weapon out of something. So you haven't got your TV. Oh, you got your... oh, no, I didn't make a weapon. Do you know the lights have got long lights yeah, 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 on yeah. the top? And they've got special screws in. But I've just, what you do is you burn the end of a toothbrush and then you just, when it's all fully melted, I would just squash it onto the onto it so it would mould the shape of the screw. So and then, then I unscrewed got... them. So I had the metal end, you know, like the, the metal end of it yeah. instead. So I had it behind my back and I, I, I saw it when they come to the door, I went, boo! And they've all jumped back and they stood there and I was going, hey, come and get it. I said, listen very carefully. I said, if I was going to do something, your head had all, I'd already caved your skull in. I said, this is just a warning, stop winding me up. Finally, one of them come got it. Within five, ten minutes, I just heard a van, a cat ear van, reversing up, and I was took from Durham Prison into a top security prison, Franklin. Full, uh, Franklin. Went there, took straight to the segregation unit because I was still under the prison officer. So every prison I went, I was still on charges with stabbing the prison officers. So every prison I went, it was You're straight to the seg. You're going to get shit, aren't you? Oh, I got hammered. Straight to the seg. It was all right at first. And then they start winding me up, and I thought, sack it, let's go to the war. And when you say winding you up, what did they specifically just do? Just doing then? stuff like turning your lights on and off, uh, when you're going to sleep, banging your door, keeping you awake. Head games. Just playing with your mind, you know what I mean? And then and just wind, just doing stuff. So I just thought, you know what, sack it, let's go. And then I ended up um, battling on a daily basis. With the, They would come in, with, they would put ballys on, so I didn't know who they were. So I couldn't retaliate and stuff. And that they'd come in with ballys on and just six or seven of them with a right gear. I'd be laid on, on my bed just fast asleep. And they'd just come running in, boom, handcuffed. Like, you can fight for so long, doesn't matter who you are. There's only You can only fight six, seven men in riot shields uh, for so long before the, you, you, you're knackered and you have to get down. That's but you know what they do? Right now. They got me down and they'd handcuff me. And when they ha had me <coughs> handcuff me, then they'd go up, do stuff. Like one of them. I'll tell you one occasion what happened. This one time I was in a camera cell and they said to me, right, come out. And I used to go through a process because I ended up on a, as a CSC prisoner in the uh, close supervision circuit. But not on the unit or anything. It's where you're going from like seg to seg in the, in the top security prison and you go in these cells where they've got a hatch. So you have, it's 23 hours bang up. When they'd open your door, you have to be six or seven. Like yeah, you have to be six or seven. Yeah. No, no. You have to be six or seven prison officers in riot gear. Or they can't open your door. And 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 then you have to go through a process. So I'd have to lie on the floor and put my hands up before they'd open the door. Then they'd slam the door open. Then they'd, be up, they'd put the shield to the door. Then they'd come, put the shield on your back, uh, tell you to put your hands off your head. And then a man would ride again on that side, would search your body, and he would search you. Then they'd run to the back, back to the door. And then they'd say, right, stand up slowly. If you went faster any time, they'd be on you. So you slowly got to get up. And then slowly walk back till your back touches the, then you uh, the shield. Then they'd step back. Then they'd step to shield. Then you step the side. Then they push you up against the wall. And you'd be searched again. And that was just to go on the exercise yard. Then you'd have to walk backwards as slow as you possibly can until you got to the exercise yard. Then they'd get you the exercise yard, tell you to lay down. 
you'd lay down on the floor, put your hands on your head, and then they'd shout, go, 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 and everyone would just run. But I would try and get up to, and, and run at them. So as soon as the shield was off me, I would get up you and I would run. You didn't do yourself any favours, did you, mate? Really? I hate the system. I didn't do myself yeah. any favours at all. In fact, I come to the realisation that what was I expecting? Listen, I used to believe every time I come into crime, it's their fault he grasped me up. It's his fault. Oh, he's this. Oh, it's the prison officer's fault he locks the door. No, I committed the crime. So I'm in jail because I put myself in jail. It's not their fault. Now, here's another thing. I experience a lot of brutality. Like, I'm talking about, like, serious brutality. And... What was, and the, what was the worst brutality? One of them was, uh, they got me in there. They took, like I was saying, I went through that process. And they said to me this one time, and I didn't click at first. They said, go into the next room, next cell. We're going to search your script searcher. So I go to the next cell and I go to the back wall. And I'm stood there for a couple of seconds. And I just thought, this isn't right. And all of a sudden, the shield just went bang off my back. And, and what they counted on is to grab my hands, because as soon as my hands touched the wall, they, had, they were there, they had hold of my arm. What, man with right gear there, one with right gear there. But what they didn't count on was me not taking my hands off the wall and sliding my hands down the wall. Uh, so I slid my hands down the wall, turned, grabbed one of the legs and picked them up and fell with them. Then I've pushed with my legs. These are all beating me up, kicking me. And they pushed me into the le into the, I pushed them into the corner with my legs. And we're in between a metal toilet and the door. He's got his ride gear on. And I remember these are boot me, pull it. They, they, they have a thing of pulling your head back, grabbing your throat and making it so you can't breathe. And then just as you think you're going to die, they'll let go to get you a bit of breath. And you go, <laughs> and, and you right get out. that feeling like you're drowning, where your body goes into a panic. But they were trying to do all sorts of get me off, and which I get, I understand that. But I remember getting my hands, I, blank, I, black, I blanked all that out, and I had my hands so far up his shield on his thing. And all I remember doing is looking at him, and I just said, I just whispered to him and said, do not let me get my hands hands on your neck today because you were not going to home to see your family. And he started panicking. And so did the other officers. And then they started kicking me all over. And then what happened is finally you give up. You can't you can only go so far. Uh, and then they put the handcuffs on me. And I sort of wished I carried on fighting. Because they put the handcuffs on me and they tortured me for days. Absolutely tortured me. I mean like just just coming in, batting me all, and calling me a coward. So while I'm handcuffed on the floor, Shit's out. they're all coming in doing all this, about 10 of them, and I'm I'm handcuffed, and I'm the coward. Yeah, Crazy, right, isn't it? Fully grown men, 10 of them. And they would come in and just beat me to a pulp, you know what I mean? Punch me all over, and they would just... Um, another thing, food. So they would get, like, the food, they would come in, just chuck it on the floor. Just leave you there, handcuffed for days on end, and that you can't do out. You can't get up, cut because they put them on my feet as well. Put them on my back. Shouldn't you see can't you as move. a dog. Well, that's you're the getting way. punished. For, you're punished for actually being in there, and that's it. 